Hello everybody and welcome back to another installment of Medical Bites. We're going to be reviewing the ear exam for physical diagnosis 2. Remember that this is an otoscopic examination. We are using the GRIP mnemonic to help us to remember on all of our exams those things we need to do. Remember to wash your hands first in the presence of the patient. Our GRIP mnemonic allows us for greet, establish rapport, introduce and identify, explain the procedure, ensure privacy. The tools we'll be utilizing for the examination are your otoscope with a clean speculum and a 512 hertz tuning fork. You may use other tuning forks, but try and keep in this range. Remember that you should position the patient so that they're seated at the same level as you are. Make sure that you're assessing both ears and that you start with the good ear. The skill sheet that has been provided for you discusses inspection of the external ear bilaterally, including behind the ears, palpation of the auricles bilaterally, otoscopic examination bilaterally with identification of landmarks on the tympanic membrane, the cone of light, and the malleolus. While doing the examination, remember that in the adult patient, you're going to pull the auricle posteriorly, superiorly, and away from patient to straighten the external canal. This will facilitate your examination of the tympanic membrane. Once you've completed the examination of the internal structures, you will then move towards auditory acuity testing, which will test cranial nerve eight, and then finally the Rennie-Weber testing for conductive and sensory neural hearing loss. On your examination of the external ear, make sure that all of the above structures are present. Be aware of piercings and other body modification. Remember the tool that you're using is your otoscope primarily with the viewing lens and adjustment focus, your clean speculum, and note that some of these will have a port on them for the pneumatic bulb attachment port. This would allow you, especially in pediatric patients, to do a pneumatic testing of the tympanic membrane to check for otitis media and to see if there is tension on the tympanic membrane. When you are examining the external auditory canal, it should look something as such. Notice that there is some dry skin within this external auditory canal, but eventually it will lead you to a normal examination, which appears as such of the tympanic membrane. Note that there is a slight injection at the handle of the malleolus, but the cone of light and the other architecture is well visualized. Before we go on to the Weber and Rennie tests for lateralization, sensory neural and conduction loss, let's take a look at what the physical exam up to that point should look like. We will not be doing the grip assessment, but focusing on the external and internal examination of the ear. So first I'm going to examine the oracle and behind the oracle. Next, palpate the oracle and the tragus. So now I will observe the auditory canal. Once you have tested the visual, the auditory acuity of the patient, you will perform the Weber and the Rennie test. Remember that the Weber test is done with the tuning fork on top of the patient's head. Sound will be lateralized to the bad ear with conductive hearing loss. Sound is lateralized to the good ear with sensor neural hearing loss. On a normal patient, they should be heard equally on both sides. The exam should look something like this. So I'm going to test your hearing on both sides. Let me know if this sounds the same or not. Sounds the same. For the Rennie test, the tuning fork will be placed on posterior to the ear on the mastoid process first and then held perpendicular to the ear. Sound should be restored two times as long as bone conduction as it does through the air. Your examination looks look something like this. 
So I'm going to test your hearing on just this one ear now. Mm -hmm. Let me know when you stop hearing this noise. Okay. Stop. Okay. And now let me know when you stop hearing this noise. Remember that you can also test at this time the patient's auditory acuity by testing the cranial nerve 8 and both ears simultaneously. Okay, so close your eyes for me and let me know if this sounds the same on both sides. Sounds the same. So just to review for the practical portion of this ear exam, we will look at and inspect the external ear, auditory examination for the auditory meatus, the auditory canal and tympanic membrane will be done with the otoscope. Remembering that always when you do this exam, you may move from the ear to the nose, but never from the nose to the ear. Think about what's behind the tympanic membrane and remember those anatomical features of the tympanic membrane examination, the pars tensa, the pars facidia, the handle of the malleolus, the short process of the malleolus, the umbo, the cone of light, and the anterior and posterior malleolar folds.